estimate of the cost. is no longer something beyond our dreams, but is a natural event in the history of mankind. I don't think we should wait until the encounter occurs, but that we should do all in our power to prepare ourselves for it. The manner in which we first meet may determine the character of all our subsequent relations. Let us never forget the fatal impact we've had upon innumerable peoples on this earth, people of our own species who trusted us, befriended us, and who we destroyed by our thoughtlessness and insensitivity to their needs and their vulnerabilities. The simple truth is that before we can communicate with others successfully, we must first learn to communicate with ourselves successfully, and we are a long way from having achieved that. Perhaps that is where we ought to begin, with ourselves. The UFO phenomena is quite an elusive topic. Despite many years of documented encounters, there is still no confirmation from any official authorities, be it mainstream science or government, that there may be something otherworldly going on. On the contrary, there is often ridicule and avoidance whenever this subject comes up. Yet most of the general public believes that extraterrestrial UFOs exist and that the government is hiding information from us. Many people have had UFO sightings themselves. However, most people also don't give it much attention or thought, believing that it doesn't really affect us anyway and that we'll deal with it once official contact has been made. But what if the UFO phenomena is not what we thought it is, but has influenced humanity and the world at large for thousands of years? What would be the implications? Our views on life and existence, science and religion, spirituality and evolution, consciousness and psychology, as well as reality as we know it, would take on a whole new understanding when looking deeper into the UFO phenomena and the possibility of a higher alien intelligence affecting our world. Maybe we're not the main show here on Earth, and maybe not even on top of the food chain. Let's not forget, not too long ago we believed that the Earth is flat. What else will we discover? In general, it is impossible to get into any discussion about this topic with people who dismiss something right away without having sincerely looked into the evidence and research. There is no point in simply discussing beliefs and set viewpoints. Discussion is only constructive when it is not limited by personal preference, beliefs or a conditioned worldview. Open-minded objectivity is essential when seeking truth. With that in mind, we must also be discerning, because truth is often mixed with lies especially in a topic outside of what is socially and culturally accepted. It's a big swamp, but the sincere seeker who approaches the subject with a critical mind can see that, without any doubt, something otherworldly is going on and has been going on for a while. There is one important issue that needs to be considered when dealing with such French topics. Our own level of cultural conditioning. Many people project a certain typical image on the extraterrestrial phenomena based on Hollywood movies and sci-fi literature, which mostly tends to humanize intelligent alien beings in some way and keeps it on a very physical level, with aliens supposedly coming from another planet and acting out human qualities. What we see in the mainstream does affect how we view this topic, even if only unconsciously. The conditioning through official culture which has fictionalized this topic is deep and far-reaching. It cannot be underestimated. The question is, how to separate truth from lies? How can we find out what is really going on in this elusive field? What do we really know? And what do we just believe or assume? We should never underestimate the trap of wishful thinking and denial. Looking at it all with what the Buddhists call beginner's mind helps in the process of revealing the truth. 
No preconceived ideas or assumptions, but simply looking at it as it is. Cross-referencing the data and research out there, using logic and intuition alike. Separating disinformation from reliable information. Slowly putting together the pieces of this puzzle. It is obviously a topic where no one has the whole picture, and there's still much to discover. But at one point, when you have a certain amount of pieces, you can start to see an image arising. Let's look at some of these pieces and how the image could look like. When it comes to well-documented UFO cases, especially involving government and military documents, there is one book to point out, and that is Richard Dolan's UFOs and the National Security State, the chronology of a cover-up. Dolan comes from an academic background, giving him the much-needed critical but open mind when researching such matters. He holds an MA in History from the University of Rochester and a BA in History from Alfred University. Prior to his interest in anomalous phenomena, Dolan studied US Cold War strategy, Soviet history and international diplomacy. UFOs and the national security state is a historical narrative of the national security dimensions of the UFO phenomenon from 1941 to the present. Included are the records of more than 50 military bases relating to violations of sensitive airspace by unknown objects, demonstrating that the US military has taken the topic of UFOs seriously indeed. Some believe that UFOs are just developed Nazi technology or secret military projects but have nothing ET-like to them. Others explain UFOs with Jungian psychology as a projection of our collective. For anyone who doubts that the UFO phenomena is real needs to read this book. It is well documented and clearly shows that the government and military are very aware of the UFO issue and do not have a handle on it. One of the interesting things about the UFOs in the history of this country, 1952, a very big year. Why? Well, for one, it seemed like the entire nation was being invaded by UFOs. Civilians and military people alike around the country were watching these things. Military people reported them a lot. This is a memo from the Director of Scientific Intelligence for the CIA to the Director of the Agency, Walter Beetle Smith in December 1952, and this is what it says. At this time, the reports of incidents convince us that there is something going on that must have immediate attention. Sightings of unexplained objects at great altitudes and traveling at high speeds in the vicinity of major U.S. defense installations are of such nature that they are not attributable to natural phenomena or known types of aerial vehicle. It's the CIA. People don't just come out and say, boss, I think we're being invaded. But that's about as close as you're going to get in a classified memo to the director of the Central Intelligence Agency in 1952. The really extraordinary encounter occurred when this object detached a smaller object from it, which then pursued the F-4 interceptor. The pilot pulled an extreme turn to get away from the object, and this small object turned inside his own arc, and then rejoined the mother craft for a perfect rejoin. That's 1976. What can do that today, much less 35 years ago? Well, officially speaking, we don't really know. Unofficially, I think we do know. These are advanced technology that is not being operated, officially at least, by our own civilization. And therein lies the problem with the UFO phenomenon. Everyone in the world knows there's something going on, and no one in official power is ever willing to admit it. There are people who are so high-bound in their opinions and so skeptical about this without bothering to look at any of the evidence, that they will say, well, the government did look into this. The government did have Project Blue Book. They investigated it. They found there was really nothing to this. I heard that there was a scientific investigation, too, that also debunked UFOs. 
That explanation to this day is used by the Air Force and by the government to dismiss the whole topic of UFOs. But here's the deal. Project Blue Book, a joke of an operation. I have a letter here from 1955 to the commander at Ent Air Force Base in Colorado Springs, Colorado about UFO reports. In keeping with the purposes of the UFOB program, in this case UFOB means UFO, it is necessary to strive to reach as many case solutions as possible, thereby reducing the percentage of unknowns to a bare minimum. Not a minimum, a bare minimum. As pointed out in the UFOB guide, the word solution cannot always be used in the scientific sense when dealing with UFOBs. For this purpose, it must more often mean that a given case meets a given hypothesis. If it looks like it might be a flock of birds, you don't have to bother investigating. Just put down birds and it's solved. And we're told that they investigated a total of 12,618 sightings and only 701 remained unidentified. Look, I'll tell you right now, those people didn't do one investigation that was worth a damn. That is the scientific foundation, if you can believe it, as to why your government continues to this day to deny that there is a UFO reality worth investigating. Dolan also examines the rising of a national security state or military-industrial complex independent of official government supervision, as well as the issue of disinformation and counterintelligence programs COINTELPRO designed to deliberately spread false information in order to keep the public away from the truth. Compartmentalization is the name of the game, on a need-to-know basis. That's how secrecy works. Many people who have looked into the topic of UFOs have come across the Disclosure Project, an organization under the guidance of Stephen Greer, which also reveals the government and military involvement in the UFO field. At first the Disclosure Project seems to be a very good source and has a somewhat more serious image than your average UFO site. Greer and his project is quite popular these days, especially in the New Age movement. UFO enthusiasts seem to take Greer's work as a credible, reliable source and are happy to hear that our benevolent space brothers are here, possibly providing us with technology like zero-point energy, which the secret government is apparently hiding from us. According to Greer, we are also threatening the aliens and a possible contact scenario because of our space weapon program. While there is some valid information presented by Greer, with the very ideal objective of bringing about disclosure of the UFO phenomena through Congress, there also seems to be disinformation, in particular in regards to the intention of the visitors. Greer claims that there is no evidence of any negative behavior on part of the ETs. But is that true? UFO researcher Guy Malone writes about Stephen Greer, There are certain problems with the lesser known but equally sought after goals of the disclosure project, which hide, in plain sight, behind the noble top-line pursuit of disclosure which should raise concerns. Namely the seemingly religious zeal with which Dr. Greer promotes the intergalactic community we are supposedly being invited to join. These other non-essential to disclosure pursuits are built upon a single faulty premise that UFOs are not ever harmful. It is simply unreasonable to believe that, as a noted UFOlogist, Dr. Greer has never heard of these or similar reports. Too much of the UFO community simply ignores all such reports in favor of either an undeserved loyalty to the UFOnauts or a hidden agenda, political, spiritual and or financial. Promotion of UFO beings as benevolent and the ideal of a peaceful intergalactic community is the hallmark only of uninformed researchers, well-informed disinformation agents, New Age acolytes and UFO cult leaders. <laughs> 